Live from London, it's Plank of the Week with Mike Graham. A very good evening and welcome to Plank of the Week, the one show where you don't have to worry about doing any judging because we do it all for you. Uh, first up though, Alex Brooks is here, Russell Quirk is here, Will Geddes is here, Steve Denyer is here. Welcome to all of you. Welcome to Plank of the Week. Let's kick it off straight away with the Prime Minister. Yeah. Shall can we? Just, can, can I just have this permanent chair here and it's just permanently <laughs> Sakir Starmer? Done, <laughs> dusted, win every week. It's so obvious, it's so easy. Yes, Keir Starmer, um, Although this surely. Week, Keir this Starmer. week, I'm going, to, I'm going to stop you there and ask you just to watch this. Um, this week, he started his first Prime Minister's questions by referring to Rishi Sunak as the Prime Minister. <laughs> Not once, mm. but three <laughs> times. Have a look at this. The Prime Minister knows the framework. It's the same test for all licences that the Prime Minister knows. I don't think the Prime Minister is really inviting me to put that to one side. We have to... Uh, the Leader of the Opposition. So, tell us oh, why you're nominating him specifically. he really doesn't have much idea. But he if, he's, if he's being haunted by the ghosts of Prime Minister's past, yes. he's certainly showing it, isn't he? Because he is. he's apparently <laughs> taken down the picture of Margaret Thatcher that yes. Gordon Brown had commissioned, yes. painting of her. Yes. Uh, and it was put in 10 Downing Street. And it was put in a place uh, called the Thatcher Room, wasn't it? Right. So now the Thatcher Room doesn't have a picture of Margaret Thatcher in it. <laughs> but, I mean, it's just... It, it just suggests that this is a man who's incredibly prickly, but also there is something quite sinister about this. When you have that much sort of hatred yeah. or that much sort of venom about somebody or something who right. doesn't even exist anymore, right. when you're that committed to your political ideology that you start, I don't know, taking paintings yeah. down, you're joining the ranks of some pretty nutty tyrants. It's a bit cultural revolutionary type, It is, it? yeah. You know, let's wipe out the past and pretend... Well, and, and frankly, I mean... Who wouldn't? I mean, surely everyone's got a picture of Margaret Thatcher somewhere, haven't they? Yeah, I do. I would have thought so. Have you got one? <laughs> well, well, just, oh, there here's we something I prepared earlier. <laughs> do you know what I love? This is, is this the same one as last time? Is this a different one? No, it's one? a different one. This You've is, got loads of well, them. Well, wait for it. You ain't seen nothing yet, Alex Phillips. So let's have a look at the cartoon. This is a cartoon that's gone viral. It's got Keir Starmer sort of hiding behind the sofa as they remove uh, the, uh, the aforementioned offensive <laughs> portrait. And there he is, standing side by side with the Iron Lady. If only she was still here. <laughs> if only she if was only. still here. Yeah. Yeah. She would have taken like, yeah. a little lock of hair and cloned her, don't you? Yeah. Yes. I mean, what would she make of it all now? Let's develop uh, Sir Keir Starmer's week, shall we? Because, you know, this is a guy who um, has had yet another bad week for Labour. We'll be getting into a bit of uh, some of the other MPs and all the rest of it. But, you know, old comical Lammy, as I now call him, oh. um, David Lammy, got himself into all kinds of trouble with Israel and with America uh, by managing to, to piss everybody off, basically, um, by declaring that he was going to ban uh, weapons sales to Israel, but yeah. not very many of them. He's yeah. going to ban 30 companies and 30 licences were going to be suspended out of 350. Um, and Starmer gets up in, again in the House of Commons and says, oh, it was a legal decision. I mean, does he think that we're absolutely stupid? Everybody mm. knows it was a political decision. It, it was it, not it a legal decision. It smacks to me, Mike, uh, having been on the peripheries of arms deals in various parts of the world. I don't think you it, can be on the periphery it, of an arms deal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think you're either in well, the arms Michael, deal... Every week. Allegedly. <laughs> you're either, allegedly. I mean, you're either in the arms deal or you're not. <laughs> allegedly. <laughs> I may have known a Just few people. Just peeking over the fence <laughs> and seeing it, what's going but, on. You know what? When there's only 30-odd companies out of, what, 350 yeah. that have been banned... That smells of something rather considered it rather does. than anything yes. else. Because Token. you either do it wholesale yeah. or not at all. And also but for Kirsten What about these 30 companies? Why well, they specifically well, Kirsten, were banned? Well, they haven't given us a reason for that. Apparently, there will be a document which they're going to produce. I'm sure but also, will. he's claiming that, you know, this was done by the Attorney General uh, with a view to the breach of international law. But when Lamy made the announcement, he was talking about a possible future breach of the international law. So, again, you get these lawyers, you get people like Starmer, who's a lawyer, yeah. who's a boring, boring man, who's trying to hide behind the law. Mm. And actually, there is no law. They haven't mm. broken any no, law. No, no, exactly. it's posturing. It's yeah, ideology. It's we, look, we know it is. And it's, it's trying to play to their audience, play to their crowd. Yeah. Uh, and obviously the substantial Muslim bloc vote that Labour wants to continue to attract. Yeah. Yes. Mm. I may be coming to that. Yeah. Well, let's have more on Keir Starmer for you. But first, we've got a clip, I think, haven't we, of Sir Keir Starmer meeting one of his fans. Because we may as well have a Tory if we have a person like you who lies to the party. It's <laughs> dishonest. Thank you very much. And our health right, service is going right much. down the pan. And you have a big responsibility to the working class people right. of this country. Can you move back, please? Excuse me. Excuse you me. Back, You're just... Don't be getting physical. No, I'm not touching you. <laughs> <laughs> Can you move back, please? Can you shut your mouth, Brett? Can you move back, please? Yeah, well, I, I like her. Look at that. I like her. She gets my vote. Yeah, we do. You can see his absolute 
absolute fear on his yeah. face because he doesn't fear? know how because to talk I to think people. There's something else there. There's a sort of like that it goes completely blank. Like and robot. There's like slight, like a deathly haze that appears yeah. above his Do eyes. Do you know he, he came and in I to just... see us at Virgin Radio yeah. the, the week before the yeah. election? Yeah, and yeah funnily he... enough, he didn't stop at talk. Uh, <laughs> 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 I like was waiting for him. Didn't pop his head round your door. But he did. He he look. He looks straight through you. It's a very kind of unsettling. Yeah. Um, really strange experience. Do you think yeah. because everything he's going to say is completely rehearsed and it's just, uh, it, it's not a natural I think he's constantly he frightened. Well, that was the famous interview with Chris Evans where he said that he wasn't going to work beyond six o'clock on a Friday because he had a very strict rule mm. that he didn't do it. Mm. And then, of course, as soon as the first Friday came along, he was working. Yeah. I mean, he just keeps saying things yeah, that just, he then just contradicts goes everything. back on, yeah. Yeah. which, in my view, makes him a liar, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it's a bit like, you know, not telling us that you're no. going to do away you with the winter fuel allowance. Well, we'll not come on to us, that. Not what telling us what he's going to do around immigration uh, uh, and so on. What so, yeah. I don't get is, you know, I, good old Mel Gibson wrote something on Twitter the other day, which I quite enjoyed, yeah. and he put, once he, upon a time... he from his period of madness? <laughs> I don't know, but this wasn't a mad comment, I mean, you know, can really? I just say? I mean, yeah. So he, this I wasn't a mad sugar. comment. So Something I, you know, else. maybe he has. Because right. he said, once upon a time we fought the communists, now we're talking about electing them. Yes. And this is a really interesting point because Sakia Sik Starmer was in a workers' camp, a Soviet yeah. workers' camp in former Czechoslovakia, right. managed by a very senior USSR spy. Mm. Yeah. And now he's our prime minister. Yeah. I'm like, I know. It's surely a that's worry. a big deal. Well, surely don't worry, though. Talk about don't worry, this. He's got some very reliable uh, MPs behind him. Uh, oh, one of yeah. them, I think, is your he nomination, has. Russell. Yes, yes. The newly elected Jazz Athwell, yes. um, who is the MP for Ilford South right. uh, and uh, former leader of Redbridge Council. Uh, and in that particular role, when he was leader of Redbridge Council, he was very vocal about a few things. And one of those things in particular he was very vocal about was um, standards of rental properties. Mm. Um, and he went as far as to say, when he was leader of Redbridge Council, um, that um, if you're a bad landlord, a uh, slum landlord, yeah. we're coming for you. Yeah. We're going to come and get you. Um, He's an expert on slum landlording, isn't guess he? Guess what? Guess um, <laughs> what? That might not have aged very well, Jazz Athwell, because, yes, he's just been found out as a, a part of a BBC investigation. Yeah. So, look, the BBC can actually and do things properly. Well, they can. Um, there's the tweet there. Yeah, yeah, there, there's the tweet. So, effectively, of his 15 properties, bearing in mind he's now the biggest landlord in Parliament, uh, the majority of them, it seems, certainly those that were seen by the BBC journalists uh, and in a uh, comment that's actually come out now from the tenants that yeah. occupy those properties, those properties are full of, I quote, uh, mould, ants, and so on. They are disgusting. Yeah. They are a disgrace. And actually, his response at first was just to kind of shrug his shoulders. Right. Uh, then he threw his letting agent under the bus right. and says it's their fault. Right. He, he has said no he was responsibility. Shocked. He was shocked. Shocked, yeah. So a yeah. man that owns probably four or five million quid's worth of properties yeah. hasn't seen them for no, years. Doesn't apparently. know them. Doesn't We've know got a little about. clip for you. Uh, this is him being criticised by the London Renters Union. But there are growing calls for Labour to take firmer action against Mr. Athwell. As a landlord, he is responsible to make sure that his houses are safe. He's responsible for following the law. We simply cannot trust our government to take care of us as renters and to solve a housing crisis with people like Jess Atwell in power. We, we think the only thing that is enough is for him to resign. Yeah, so the most unpopular landlord um, in the world, by the looks of it. This is what he said, though, uh, after you uh, described him kind of shrugging his shoulders. I'm shocked and sickened by the series of problems that have come to light. I had not been aware of these issues until this week, for which I am furious. I've immediately dismissed the managing agent of my properties. Mm. I mean, you're in property, Russell. Well, can, I can mean, I just say, is I, it possible that he couldn't have known? I've tried to find out with uh, a, a fair bit of kind of delving and a bit of effort who the letting agent was to give yeah. him the right of reply because he's thrown him under the bus. Yeah. Um, no one seems to know in the industry, of which uh -huh. I'm part, who that letting agent was. So, I don't know, dare I speculate? Maybe there wasn't even a letting agent, Ooh, who knows? Goodness me. Well, somebody obviously runs the business for him if he's got yeah, that many properties. Yeah. So, but it doesn't admonish his responsibility. But it might be, no, it doesn't. No, Legally or morally. I like, no. I like where Russell's going with this. Mm. I mean, I think next time something goes wrong in my life, I'm going to fire my make-believe personal assistant. Yes, absolutely yeah. right. I do that weekly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. many well, times. I mean, <laughs> personal assistants, it wouldn't, it, be, it wouldn't be the first time, Steve, would it, that somebody in the, in the sort of public eye does that? I mean, celebs do it all the time. Oh, you know, absolutely. Oh, it wasn't my fault, you know. It was, the publicist. The fault, it was that publicist who, yeah. you know, shouldn't have never have said that, or yeah. never, should never have allowed me to say it. Anyway, moving on. Uh, Will Kelly's yet another Labour MP. Oh yes. Uh, <laughs> I mean, so here we go. We're three in. <laughs> three for three. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got the lovely Jess, the stress Phillips. Yes. Um, who uh, has come out with this uh, audacious story about the fact that she jumped the queue at her local A and E with the NHS 
because her she she voted for the ceasefire in Gaza. Yes, right. And apparently the doctor was Palestinian. So yeah. so that got she, her to she, the front. She of the claims queue. that she went to A and E. She doesn't. I can't remember yeah. whether she, what she went there for. I do, and I will tell you in a moment. Go on. So she she came in and she basically uh, she said she went to A and E with breathing difficulties. Now right. I can tell you, there are three things that will push you to the front of the queue. Breathing, right. heart conditions, yeah. or any head injuries. Chest pain. So, uh, yes, heart, you know, heart or chest yeah. pain, you know, and head injuries. That will get you to the front of the queue regardless. Yeah. So this utter nonsense of her saying, well, because she voted for the Gaza ceasefire, yeah. which actually didn't push through anyway. No. Keir Starmer was but opposed to But she wanted to, to make the point, didn't she? She wanted to make the point that she was so liberal. And, right. and that. But the other thing which also I found astounding about her statement was that she said... The state of the NHS is is far worse than I've seen in war zones. Right. Now, I did some cursory research onto Google, and I can't see any information or evidence of her ever visiting a war zone. Yeah. She's she's made all sorts apart of statements. Apart from Birmingham, obviously. Apart from Birmingham, yeah, well. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you don't I get mean, more hostile than that. Yeah. You, you don't get more hostile than that, but, yeah. and uh, no offence to the, our brummy viewers, but... Um, I would say, you know, she's talked about the Sudan, she's talked about Yemen, she's right. talked about the Ukraine, but she hasn't visited any one of these countries. No. And I can tell you, some of those countries I, that I have actually been to, the healthcare systems are actually uh, pretty rotten and probably not as good as the NHS. Yes, probably not. Yeah. But the thing is, she deliberately made this point in a podcast, and it sort of backfired yeah. on her, because oh, I think some of these politicians haven't worked out that when you are doing a podcast, they're recorded and people actually listen to them. Yeah. You know, <laughs> because they kind of they talk to each other as if they're having these little love ins. It's right? like yeah. a private and conversation. It's like a private conversation. Yeah. And when it yeah. comes out, they all go, Oh, I didn't realise it was going to be actually publicised. Yeah. You know, but but you know, the idea and it, of course it backfired on the NHS because I think she said that every doctor in the A and E was Palestinian, which I'm sure is also probably <laughs> yeah, not true. You know? yeah, I mean, I'm sorry, and, I mean, but I, mean, I, I call it are, just the stress for this, but yeah. it should be just the bullshitters. Yeah, well, in my, there my, is definitely some, some, some room for that. Let's have a look at what happened when she was asked if she wanted to be leader of the Labour Party. Do you think that you could be leader of the Labour Party? I mean, you, it's, the way, it's the way everybody asks the question in just a slightly different way. And what you said was, do you think that you could be the leader of the Labour Party? And of course, the answer to that question is, of course, somebody like me could be the leader of the Labour Party. Do you want Will to be the leader? the leader of the Labour Party is an entirely different question. Do you want uh, to be? I literally want to go to bed more than I've ever wanted anything. That's but a bit honestly, forward, isn't it? I mean, she's only been in <laughs> two minutes. I mean, she wants yeah. to go to bed with her. We'll only get the weekend Blimey. started. But, but, but you know. surely it's also... I mean, she's, I, I guess this is what you're getting at. She's yeah. a plank not for having done that and allowed herself to jump the queue. No. She's also a plank for actually telling everybody that she managed to, uh, to, to jump the queue. Right. But also the fact that she hasn't given a second thought for the people that were behind her in the queue. No. Yeah. People that had a no. legitimate right to be there were probably next. Who, who would have been... Who would have probably waited. Elbows yeah. ...and says, no, I'm next. And they probably would... perhaps, that if you're Jewish, you would be at the back You'd be the back, exactly. The thing is about Jess point, Phillips Alex. is that the mainstream media, the typical leftist lot, yes. are fawned over her, thought she's brilliant, isn't she great? Yeah. She's straight She's talking. so down to earth. She's this, you know, oh, she's a woman, as if like 50% of the population don't have a vagina. Right. And, um, and, and also, all sudden, women, guess though. what? She's now, in, <laughs> yeah. she's, she's, she's now in the party of government, and it turns out she's cocky, but also Sorry? a bit thick. Yeah, I know. Well, this is the problem. You know, because one of the reasons that she will never be leader of the Labour Party is they will never elect a woman leader because they're the only political party in the country, in the whole never of has. Great Britain, that, mm. that is, not just in England and Wales, mm. who haven't ever had a woman lead them. No, um, I don't know if there's some kind of misogynistic yeah. problem inside well, they, the Labour Party. They also don't but know what a woman me. is. So, no. you know, well, I'm they're still sure debating that, that, Alex. They're still debating yeah, I'm that. sure that if David Lammy were to put on a frock, he Comical might have Lammy. a chance. Yeah, yeah. he might well I, do. Well, I mean, it's even more ridiculous that he actually got one of the key jobs in the Cabinet, Secretary of State for Foreign Commonwealth Office. Are you having a laugh? You know yeah. what I want to see? You haven't got it, but you know I want to see. I'm going to have to look at it after this, aren't I? The what Lammy on Mastermind. Lammy I just on love Mastermind. it. I, just, you, I, yeah. I can't get enough of it. It's a contradiction in terms to have Lammy and Mastermind <laughs> yeah. in the same sentence. So well, it was so funny. We played it a couple of weeks ago and he gets every single question wrong. <laughs> <laughs> apart, yeah. from, apart from the questions he passes on, because obviously he didn't know the answer to those, but the ones that he yeah. guessed, he got them all wrong. My favourite was that when he was, who was the, who was it that succeeded um, Henry the Seventh? 
and he said Henry the <laughs> Sixth. <laughs> and I just go in, in any world. Machine. In any world, yeah. that's not really working. Yeah. Right, um, Steve, over to you. Biggest story of the week, I suppose Guys, you might I, say. I'm going to break the the Labour theme and go for the elephant in the room, Oasis. Although let's not forget when Tony Blair was in uh, Parliament and was in the Prime Minister's office, and he was in Downing Street. He had all the Kill Britannia lot, didn't they? Because I think Liam, Downing, yeah. Yeah. Liam yeah. and Noel went to Downing Street. Did they not say they snorted a line in the uh, toilets? Or something? Yeah, they did. I yeah. think they did. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. It was the 90s. Yes. No. Yeah, right. um, I mean, obviously, so, you know, you mentioned that. There's a whole kind of generation of people who grew up with these songs yeah. and these boys. And people have been, you know, living, breathing, hoping that they get back together for 15 years. And on Saturday morning, the tickets went on sale. Now, I'm putting Oasis into the plank instead of Ticketmaster because yeah. Oasis made this statement at 9 o'clock on Saturday. And they said, we, we're just condoning the tickets at face value, yeah. which are like 70 quid, right. um, you know, standing, 150 quid at Wembley Stadium, right. um, seated. And then a few hours later, when Ticketmaster put the prices up in the surge, they said, actually, we're also, we're going with this. So, um, you know... The so Oasis owned it, basically. Well, they, well, they said, owned it. So they went up. back on it. So there's lots of people who spent, you know, eight hours mm. or even longer in the queue. Right. And you suddenly get these inflated prices. You panic. Right. And you get logged out. And that's what happened to literally millions yeah. of people. And they there was a lot of problems with the, with the original sale uh, in the morning, wasn't there? Because there were so many people. I mean, I saw people posting things like, I'm 228,000... In the queue. In the yeah, queue, yeah, yeah. and you're kind of going. That's such a big number. You can't even begin to, to work out how long that's yeah. going to take. And all the yeah. Irish ticket sites at the beginning, they crashed, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. I mean, Ticketmaster did. So it went out in Glasgow, in Birmingham, Manchester, all the big yeah. cities. It went right. down. By the time it did recover, of course, you're in nine out. You know, you're yeah. wasted for nine hours. Well, I know wow. people who just wasted their entire Saturday. Yeah, yeah. you know, because yeah, yeah, yeah. they couldn't leave. You know, it's like being a fruit machine in Vegas. Yeah, you know, you can't I mean, leave in case it pays out. Aren't those people the planks, yeah. though? Aren't those people the planks? Because rather than spend, I don't know, £500 million on a ticket to go see yeah. Oasis, you could just go down the local Weatherspoons dressed as Jimmy Savile and throw urine on yourself. You know, save yourself some money. That's an interesting part of our usual activity yeah. at the weekend. I hate <laughs> Oasis. I, I really right. don't we, we like can, it. We can, though, as is the theme of this particular episode of Planks, we can bring that particular segment back to the Labour Party. We can, because Lisa yeah. Nandy, of course, decided to put her oar in and say that, you know, the government might have to launch an investigation into surge pricing yes. uh, oh, of God the so. tickets, right? But yeah. let's have a look. Um, uh, this is some sad Oasis fans who I think didn't manage to get tickets. For many, a case of denial. I feel like this is giving me hope. Anger. Pretty confident this did not work. <laughs> Bargaining. I'll pay for the ticket, that's fine, but you can camp in my garden. Before depression. That's not looking good either. And eventually acceptance. I mean, the funny thing is that a lot of these kids who are getting tickets, I call them kids because I can, because I'm really old, um, then what? They weren't they around in the 90s. Born. They weren't around in the 90s. Yeah, but you know, Noel said what is recently, this? you know, that, that's what happens. You know, so this is why this, this band is so pivotal. These songs have, have gone kind of multi-generational. People know Don't Look yeah. Back in Anger. That's, I mean, that's yeah. probably a, a great example. When the Manchester bombing happened, that was the song that yeah. was played sure. at the memorial. Do you remember? So we've yeah. kind of grown up yeah. with these songs and with this right. band. And those songs are so huge. This is a big deal. But mainly for them. Because yeah, like they but they are going to. They are going to be like, do they? They are going to make an awful lot of money. I suspect they will be kind of Oasis light concerts because it will be lots of older people who might have thrown beer cans when they were 19 or 20, <laughs> but now that they've got kids and they're in their 40s, <laughs> yeah. they're not going to do that because they've got to worry about how they're going to get home. Yeah. You know, they're not going to do the shows you know, have to loads and loads of PM. drugs. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, I wonder if it will be anywhere near as good. I saw Oasis because a friend of mine put them on in Scotland. And, I mean, it was absolute mayhem. You know, they often threatened to go off stage if they didn't get bottles thrown at them. Because they were getting bottles thrown at them constantly. And they were like, you know, if you don't stop throwing them, we're walking off. You know, and it was unbelievable. <laughs> anyway, um, it's a great start, though. Four fantastic nominations. Coming up, uh, I'm going to go for yet another member of the government, I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> Angela Reina. Um, but uh, also, there's some football coming up as well uh, with Alex. We'll be back after this. Welcome back to Plank of the Week. It's time now for my first nomination, and I am going to go with the woman who is a rather still called 
think the Deputy Prime Minister, you know, Angela Rayner, uh, the woman who once called the Tories scum, uh, the woman who a lot of people think is the life and soul of the Labour Party, because when you talk about Keir Starmer being robotic and kind of, you know, completely and utterly emotionless, she's the complete opposite to that. You know, we only saw her just last week, I think, in Ibiza, uh, raving, Angela Raver, some people were calling wow. her, um, which a lot of people think is great. They go, oh, well, that makes her seem a bit human, doesn't it? But she's come back, uh, and there she is, uh, raving in the DJ booth. But again, using her privilege, you know, as a, yeah. uh, as a member of Cabinet, to, to be out of the way of the crowd and up where the sort of, you know, supposed celeb DJs are. Mm. And everybody knows what happens in Ibiza. Uh, nobody talks about it, but, you know, basically, you know, people Stuff take... for sale. Yeah, people take a lot of drugs and dance around. I'm not saying she did, I have no idea. <laughs> but anyway, so she, since she's come back, um, she's managed to upset even more people, right? Because first of all, she's got the problem of... Um, suggesting that everyone should go on a four-day week, um, which business has basically said, you're going to shut business down if you do this, because not a lot of people can do that. Then, of course, she um, decided that it would be a great idea to ban the sale of council houses, uh, despite the fact that she made quite a nice profit at the time, 48,000 quid, from the sale of her council house. Yeah. So it's another case of she can do whatever she wants, but you can't. Yeah, mass hypocrisy. Uh, and also this week, uh, she was asked to define the government's definition of Islamophobia. Yes. Uh, well, I was, coming to that. I was coming to that because I've got that clip. Could the Secretary of State please explain to me and the House what the government, government's definition of Islamophobia actually is? I say to the Honourable Member that a new definition must be given careful consideration so that it comprehensively reflects multiple perspectives and considers potential <laughs> implications for different communities. And we're actively considering our approach to Islamophobia, including definitions, and we'll provide further updates on this in due course. That guy to her left has got no idea what she's talking about. <laughs> she knows and, what she's and neither, talking and neither about. has anybody else. read any of those words no, on a, a bit of paper. A civil, a civil servant's put that in front of her ten minutes previously. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Can you she, tell? Can do you do tell? we think she's just a bit thick? I think she is a bit thick. And, yeah. I mean, she did... I mean, you know, it's nothing against working-class people, which is what you all get accused of. If you have a go at her and you go, you're either yeah, yeah. a misogynist or you're against working-class people. Yeah. She actually blocked me on uh, Twitter many, many years ago. Badge of honour. Because she was on uh, Question Time. And I think I, I think I, I questioned how intelligent she actually was. Yeah. And was she intelligent enough to be on Question Time? Yeah. Singer, that yeah. was it. And I, was, I haven't been able to see one of her tweets since. But, you know, I do wonder sometimes whether in the, in the definitions that they're going to give us all for this hate speech that we're all going to be apparently uh, getting ourselves involved in, where, where on that scale is scum? You know, if you call somebody Tory scum... Uh, is that hate speech? I don't yeah. know. Mike, I'd have to say, I wouldn't hold your breath to getting that definition mm. because she used that lovely catch-all in due course. Yeah. Which means they're, they're, they're under well, no I mean, time it highlights, to deliver it, it on, highlights, on does that it definition. not, Alex, the problem with trying to come up with these definitions because you can't define certain things well, there's, absolutely there's, there's because no there's no instance. absolute because there's, you have to know how somebody right. means it yeah. what their intention right. is it's like incitement to well, violence there, there should be no such thing as hate crime full stop right. on any account because you you know if you a, a, attack somebody if you harass somebody if you injure somebody if you steal from somebody like those are covered yeah. by i don't know crime yeah criminal law yeah, but nothing happens the to rest you for of any it it's just a nonsense although i would say given a sort of past form in the old beefer whoosh, i think she's yeah. the only one of the label lot who actually don't mind a bit of Maggie. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> you know I, mean? say, I would quite like to have a night out with her. Yeah. In Ibiza. Yeah. With a bit of backstage access. I'm sure you know it'd be I mean? quite really? funny. I would no, want sure backstage she, I'm sure access she, I'm with sure her. she'd be great fun. But the problem is she is Deputy Prime Minister. The other thing is <laughs> that she's actually been rowed out of that job because while most of the, uh, uh, the summer months were uh, with Keir Starmer working in Downing Street... I mean, whether she was on holiday or not, she doesn't have much responsibility well, for, for government not, affairs. But since July the 5th, so she just hasn't been around. No, right? yeah. So we, we saw her very, very briefly at that the, the tragedy of that fire in Dagenham. Yeah. That was the night, actually, that she went off to Ibiza. Yeah. So she's gone from kind of, you know, yeah. uh, talking sympathetically about the plight of the residents of that particular block, yeah. literally goes straight to the airport and goes off to, to right. Ibiza. But apart from that, uh, we haven't seen her for... No, what, I mean, I'm not one of those people that minds that she went on holiday. I don't care that no. she goes on holiday. Some people were yeah, having been Visible. Some, yeah, but I think she's been deliberately rowed out of all sorts of conversations by Sue Gray, mm. who's the woman who's the sort of power behind the throne, yeah. who, the country, sits, yeah. who sits yeah. in, in her little cabinet office in Downing Street, deciding who can see the Prime Minister, mm. deciding which appointments can be made that she approves of and which appointments cannot be made uh, in the civil service and all over the place. And so she's the yeah. real de facto I, I, Prime I think Minister. Angela Rayner becomes the new Diane Abbott. 
yeah. over the next few months, yeah. where, where she will say stupid things, things that we all lampoon, well, I and think she'll I'm be right. kept back. Well, I wonder if she's not being put out there just in case she does say stupid things. And exactly. that, that's why she's being yeah, literally yeah, yeah. kept on a short yeah. leash. Yeah, which is pretty were. inconvenient when she's the Deputy Prime Minister and also the Secretary of State for Housing. Yeah, but the yeah. Deputy Prime Minister is a bit of a fake news job, unless like she's she's someone like Boris says position. on a ventilator. But she's yeah. also Secretary but, of State yeah, for something, housing, housing yeah. Yeah. communities, yeah. Again, that, local there's government. A load of, there's a load of other minister, like, minister, ministers who cover basically her portfolio. They're sort of fake news jobs. It's, they wanted to give her a title because it's our Ange. Yeah. But she's not expected to do anything. Well, again, because the Labour Party is all about covering off bits of the party that they think they need to appeal to. Yeah. And so she kind of can, she's good for the left wingers yeah, and the left trade working unionists and all that, right? of, of which there's very few left. Um, let's move on. Alex, you've got FIFA. Well, apparently, if a footballer thinks that something's racist, they can get out the magic sign. Right. But they can't just go to the referee and say, he just... Oh, there we are. What the hell is this? Well, I don't know. Racism? Oh, I don't know. Just... Uh, that looks ridiculous. Grow a thicker skin or something? What's going on with the guy on the left in his eyes? He's got some... So, hang on. So, this is in the middle of a game. If they believe that they've had a racial slur aimed right. at them, they stop and do that. Right. But I don't is that know, the thing? Yeah. Is that the signal? I mean, what, or what, you could like do what Zinazine Zidane, Zidane does, and just headbutt the guy in the, in the, uh, in the chest. <laughs> eh? It's 90,000 people in a stadium, and someone says, you're a buffoon, and then someone thinks, oh, is that racist? I don't know who did it. I mean, what? <laughs> but isn't that cr close to the West Ham thing? That, that's their Irons. thing, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the Hammers. Know, clearly, I've never been to a football match. <laughs> 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 well, I'll tell you what, we've got an explanation, I think, from FIFA. Let's have a look. We need to give players more power to act. That's done with one move. Introducing the no racism gesture that players around the world can use to report racist incidents during a match. This gesture will be the same everywhere, making it clear and easy to use. This gesture has been unanimously adopted by all FIFA member associations. It's a game changer for how we tackle racism in football. It's really not a game changer for how you tackle no. racism in football. I, don't, no. I, I thought don't they were taking it. the knee to tackle racism in football. Does oh, that, yeah. Does that not work? Can then? you clarify? Is Does that this not against work? other players or huh? is this against uh, spectators? I don't, well, I don't know. Do, do they know? You just I mean, keep walking around doing this. <laughs> and also, it's going to enter that sort of whole world of what is racist. If you call right. someone an absolute bonehead, is that then racist? Apparently not. They, they decided what, what it. What happens though? Does the game get stopped? Because, you know, what if yeah. a player decides to kind of fake the fact right. that he's had a racist slur thrown right. at him? And that's a good point. To stop the game. And what if also, also what if, they're not mic'd up, so how can no. they hear it if they? And also, what if he makes the thing? sign of the cross, as we used to say in <laughs> the Catholic school? Anti-racist um, cross, right? Anti-racist cross, or the Saint Andrew's cross, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, what if the ref doesn't see it? Or the, the linesman no, doesn't see it, and you're just standing there. Oh, actually, you know when they then? all stand in front of the goal because <laughs> someone's going to try and kick a ball into yes. the goal and they all protect themselves That's like true. this? That's yeah. true, Maybe what someone clever should do is shout, you know, Rrr! something really right. offensive. Then all the arms will go up like that. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to be in the crown jewels. I mean, if there's a lull in the game, you know, the goalkeeper hasn't seen the ball for a little while and he right. crosses his arms, everyone's going to stop. Oh, right. the yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the stop goalkeeper, yeah. like, yeah. he's doing this trying to save a penalty. What happened? Who said it to you? What? Also, it makes it sound as though there's literally somebody making a racist comment during every football game about every five minutes. Yeah. Which I'm pretty sure isn't the case. I bet if you ask 100 players... I yeah. bet it is, the, the last time that they had something racist, you know, yeah. thrown at them, they'd say, well, actually, I don't remember ever having yeah. anything said. Yeah, I know. Yeah. But, but this is the thing. I mean, the taking yeah, of the knee just... now has become something they only do at the beginning of the first match of the season, I think the last match of the season, mm -hmm. a couple of finals of cup matches or something. Yeah. It's become kind of ridiculous, isn't oh, it? Oh, they just need their new cult thin, don't they? Yeah. It's all about having... I think I'd feel like I was about to belt out a song by Steps. Yeah. Uh, if or, I saw or, yeah. Uh, or do something like for Simon well, isn't Cowell. It, isn't it also what you do when you, go, when you go cliff diving? That's the thing, isn't hey. it? As well, apparently. Yeah. Also, you do that. You not do that. When you're going down those uh, water slides, when yeah. you're in the water park, yeah, that's, yeah. that's when you do yeah. it as well. Don't be doing that, So don't do that when you go abroad. And when you're dead. Yeah. I mean, I think it's a thumbs down. It's a racist afterlife. It's a thumbs down from me for that, I think. You know. Yeah, FIFA, that's not the word. X Factor, nine danker. Do you think they might not have thought it through? I don't think they have. I love the fact as well. I love the fact that they they use it as reason and rationale for why it's going to work. Is that every uh, football association around the world has already adopted it? Do you think? It okay might then. Do you think? Well, that's all right. Yeah. Then. Well, that might, make it might work. just be virtue signalling nonsense. Aww. Yeah, I think so. Talking of which, yeah, another you know, one. It actually might make me tune into football for the first time just to see them all doing yeah. it, like waiting. Yeah, who's going to be the first out? person to do it? Yeah. Yeah. I absolutely. could be like the official red button. But you're, but you're right. Football fans. Coming from the left wing. I mean, there like we go. Yeah. 
So no, but like so football, f- football fans' sense of humour would suggest that somebody will shout something racist yeah. just to make just to get the do it. Yeah. To, and have a bet. Oh, you can have a bet on it. Spread betting. Racism how many how many people can you make the racist uh, um, <laughs> epithet at so that they make the the X? Oh God. Anyway, Russell, over to you. <laughs> yeah. So uh, talking of virtue signalling woke nonsense. Yes. Uh, the Bank of England is my next nomination. Uh, what a place. The, the hapless Bank of England and yeah. Andrew Bailey, who's the governor, yeah. uh, who unbelievably still got well, a job. Well, it yeah. is given that they printed too much money for too long. That they waited too long to raise interest rates to tackle inflation. Uh, so they, they haven't exactly covered themselves in glory as an institution, no. really, over the last couple of years or so. Um, they, they've been kind of roundly criticised by just about everybody. Right. Um, but what they've also decided to do now is to virtue signal and to be as woke as they possibly can be. Uh, the latest edict from the Bank of England is that you must, in all situations within the Bank of England, meetings and so on, ask and respect each other's pronouns. Of course. So we should oh, ask each other's pronouns at the beginnings of every interaction. Um, also, you shouldn't just assume that a man was born a man, woman was born a woman, right. and continues to be so, because right. um, it's not as simple as that, apparently. And to assume such is a micro-aggression. Definitely, yeah. micro Does the Bank of England have a gender, do you know? What, themselves? Yeah. I don't know what it is. Really. I mean, I would it have a think. female gender, male gender, non-binary? I don't know. I don't I know. Think but, but, they, them. But, they, but, them, yeah. They, them. But the I point so. is, rather than focusing on, you know, matters of the day, which is making sure that the economy doesn't crash, making sure that the cost of borrowing to mortgage... Or maybe inflation. ...isn't too high, inflation being under yeah. control. No, no, no. They're, they're actually sitting in rooms concocting this nonsense to make sure that no-one's offended because there might be someone that has decided that day to identify as something different. And you must respect that, Alex. Well, one of their big projects last year, in the midst of the kind of, you know, inflation spiral crisis that we were in uh, was to make sure that on the eighth floor uh, of the Bank of England's headquarters they've got gender neutral toilets. Of course they have. So that you can go to a gender neutral toilet should you so wish. Yeah. But you have to go all the way up to the eighth floor because they couldn't put them anywhere else. Yeah. I'm, I'm surprised. I mean, do, do you think they sit there thinking, like, what do we do about the question of, you know, banknotes and coins? Because right. they have to have a picture on and the picture is either <laughs> a man or a woman. Yeah. So how do we get around it? Do we put, I don't know, a frock on King Charles yeah. to make sure that he kind of ticks every box and doesn't offend people that don't think a man should be, I mean, I mean ridiculous it's, it's, because it's ridiculous. It is ridiculous, yeah. yeah. But this is the trouble, isn't it? But an awful lot of these institutions have forgotten the business that, that they're doing. It's the time, effort, and money that got, goes into it. Yeah, the money. The problem I've got, these are big taxpayer-funded things, yeah. you know. The Bank of England use our money to control our money. Yeah. And fine, get on with doing that. Don't be wasting hundreds of thousands of pounds on nonsense. Yeah. Just, you, you can yeah. bet that they've gone to an agency, there'll be a logo somewhere, there'll be oh, a mission yeah. statement that's yeah. cost... Tens of thousands a of three thousand page document. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just virtue signaling. Rainbow stuff. lanyards and all that. Mm. You know, sure. make sure the rainbow's right because if you get the rainbow wrong, you can get all sorts of trouble. Do you? You know, oh yeah. Wrong order. No, no, you have no, not just the wrong order, but you have to get the the different colours correct. Oh, you know, right. because otherwise certain people might get upset. Otherwise, they think you work at the NHS. Yes, it's yeah. a terrible. I know it really is. Which, which is just dreadful. as bad an organisation, frankly. So that would fit, wouldn't it? Yeah, um, unless you're, of course, Jess Phillips, who manages to get to the front of the queue. <laughs> uh, Sorry, Phillips. Of, uh, in, in what she said. <laughs> what she said earlier. The other thing about Andrew Bailey is he's the guy, if you remember, who was up in front of a, a parliamentary committee and he couldn't remember what his salary was. I can tell you it's five hundred and fifty thousand. Something like that, and he was like, oh, "I can't, I'm not, I can't remember yeah. the details." He, he's also, Mike. Do you remember this a year or so ago? He's also the man that went public on pay restraint. Yes. So we must make sure that people aren't yes. paid too much because of inflation. Right. And then went and gave a twenty million pound bonus across the whole of the Bank of England staff. Nice. Yeah. We'll I think it's very generous of him. We're getting, <laughs> we're getting paid more than half a million quid a year. I think it's hardly restraint. Is yeah. It? Yeah. But but the fact he gave twenty million quid to all of the employees at the Bank of England at yeah. the same time. I mean, I think he's a muppet. What do they all do, by the way? Also, Rachel Reeves comes to the Bank of England. So, I mean, well, there you, you go. know, they're, they're tell, tell <laughs> uh, right, coming up, uh, we're going to be going on to television uh, and also a bit more uh, on the Labour government as well. This is Plank of the Week. <laughs> Welcome back to Plank of the Week. Now, we've covered over quite a lot of the misdemeanours by the Labour government uh, so far this week, but what we haven't done is mention the winter fuel allowance. Will Getty, it's mm. over to you. Yeah, so, Michael, um, I'm sure everybody else is going to want to contribute on this one. I, I think it's one of the most horrific initiatives that um, the Labour Party have, have come in on. And as yeah. they are, you turning on absolutely everything that they said that they would deliver on their manifesto. The key issue of the winter fuel allowance for pensioners... Now, the application form, and there's, uh, I believe, 30% of pensioners that don't even apply for the winter fuel right. allowance, for whatever it might be. But the process to apply for it requires 
243 questions what? to be answered. Now, let's get some context. Yeah. If you go and apply for a passport, you will have to answer between 30 and 50 questions. Right. You're asking people who are probably not very tech-savvy, uh, probably have, to a certain extent, a lessened mental agility. Might not have a computer. They may not have a computer. Online, they may not have the ability to be able to do it themselves. Mm. They may be vulnerable. They may be frightened. They'll probably they be told, be... so they won't be able to type. <laughs> right? They've lost, <laughs> lost, lost the feel in their right. fingers to be able to use it. I mean, you know, it, it's it's beyond criminal. It's, right. be, it's, it's where I've seen in bureaucracy before... They put in all these hurdles, all these speed bumps to make it incredibly difficult yes. for people to apply for processes. Right. Unless it is, of course, you know, aided by certain lawyers who will assist certain minorities, yeah. let's say, to obtain housing, to obtain funds, to obtain, you know, social benefit. Right. So our older communities who have been contributing their taxes for their entire working lives are now being discarded and thrown on a heap yeah. by Keir Starmer and his motley crew mm. of muppets. Well, well, I'll tell you what this is. It's callous, right? It that, is. That's, that's the totally. word. This is callous. Yeah. Um, it, especially as you've got MPs that actually are paid by the taxpayer to heat not one but two yes. homes. So they, yeah. they and they're claiming go. for their electricity bill, their energy bill, Absolutely. for yeah. the yeah. second we are home. And, and if yeah. you happen to come over on a small boat from France, having come from Syria, guess what happens? You go straight into a four-star hotel or accommodation with... Yeah. Heating, yes. paid for by the taxpayer. Yeah. This is absolutely disgusting and it outrageous. Is. So the other thing that I think is disgusting and outrageous is the fact this isn't even going to go to a parliamentary vote. No. Keir Starmer has tried mm. to cancel that, tried to obstruct No, but he's, yeah. I think he's been forced into having to have the vote now. Well, let, let's see, because you know the problem's going to be when he gets a load of Labour rebels yeah. that rebel yeah. Uh, yeah. and say, look, I'm sorry, I know we're the new government. We should well, be. I think yeah, that's what's going to happen. We're, we're gonna I rebel. think that's what's going to happen. There won't be enough of them to cause the, the, the bill to fail. Uh, because but when look. Rachel Reeves announced this, which was about a couple of weeks ago, two and a half weeks ago, so ago, I've never seen our phones lighting up with so many people mm. absolutely disgusted. And it weren't yeah. just people who were affected by it, it was everyone. Everybody. They were going, why yeah. have the one group of people that the Labour Party decided to attack, the one group of people for Most whom they're of. taking money away yeah. is the pensioners. Yeah. And we know why, because they don't think the pensioners matter, they don't think they're going to vote Labour, they think they're all going to die soon. Yeah. And, they, <laughs> and you're absolutely right to say it's, it's completely and utterly callous. It's disgusting. And it's really, really I mean, it actually just But I think Starmer has also worked out that it was a bad idea. You know, I've been talking to a couple of what you might call Labour-friendly, you know, sort of pundits over the last week or so, and they've all begun to realise that they're getting so much flack in the constituencies. Local Labour MPs are getting letter after letter, email after email, saying, why are you doing this? Why do you yeah. hate the elderly? Mm. You have to do something but about it. it doesn't even it. save that much money. It's a billion no. quid. well, it's a billion it's and a bit. Thing. It's a billion and a bit, but they're already now taking 400 million uh, from somewhere else and giving it to local councils to hand out to pensioners who are struggling. Yeah. So they're actually only going to make... 600 million. Yeah, 600 exactly. million. Exactly. So yeah. it's, the whole thing is a yeah. complete mess. And then there's this... Uh, I, you guys probably know the figure, that this inordinate amount of money that's being still donated overseas for climate change. Yeah. 11 billion. That's 11 yeah. billion. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's astounding. We're we're, we're, why is this money not being reinvested? We're paying eight and a half billion for the uh, migrants who have come here legally um, who came here for, for, for work purposes or, for, or to be students, but who are not now doing either of those things. They've stayed, <coughs> and now they're all on benefits. Yep. That's another eight and a half billion. Yeah. So this black hole they keep talking about, we could we could solve it tomorrow. And we haven't yeah. even touched on the public sector pay awards. No, we haven't. <laughs> they managed to find some money for them. Yeah, yeah. nine billion. Right. Yeah. Have you fallen asleep, Alex? I'm a bit worried about you. You've gone very <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's um, getting cold in the studio. Oh, well, you're not old enough to <laughs> get the know. pensions allowance, I'm afraid. No. Um, Are you get going cold in sympathy? To the I pension? was going cold like this. Don't do that. Don't do that. Whatever you do. Linking <laughs> it all together. Yeah, but I mean, the thing is, this £20 billion pound black hole, £22 billion yeah. pound black hole, whatever it is they say it is, is nonsense, isn't I'm it? I'm just exhausted by them already. If how long have they been in? Nine it weeks. feels like they've been nine in for years. Weeks. Nine I, I just, weeks. I'm exhausted by them already. It actually makes me miss the Conservatives. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, here's a question. You know? well, the thing that I liked, that looked, that the thing that really I liked well about the Tories now. was that they were useless, but they didn't do anything. This lot are doing things which are actually harming the country. <laughs> yeah, actually, right. actually right. My, my question is, and I'd love to know the answer to this, is how many of their points that they put forward in their electioneering manifesto have they actually about turned on? All of them. Oh, 
Well, it's, more the all stuff, it's more the stuff they're doing that wasn't in the manifesto, including yeah. the removal of the winter fuel allowance, yeah. Yeah. including amnesty for immigrants, including releasing 40,000 prisoners early. None of that stuff was in the manifesto. No. Yeah. It's what I called the other day on Jeremy Carl's show an electoral fraud yeah. on the basis yeah. that, you know, if, you're, if you don't say you're going to do this yeah. stuff, you so, can't then go and do it. How, how okay, so Russell, how many have they delivered on? How many have they delivered on in terms of their manifesto? Well, nothing. We'll find Anything out, at all? The, we'll find out in the, when the budget comes. <laughs> yeah, because, exactly. You know, uh, then we'll get the real truth. Which Starmer's okay. already said is going to be, in his words, punishing. Yeah, right. Thanks also, for that. Where, right. do they think, where do they get this from? These politicians. You know, we think that we elect them to punish us, like we're some kind of, you yeah. know. They're our servants. Yeah, exactly right. Public servants. Yeah. Are they? They're supposed to be. <laughs> Somebody said to me, it's like we're in a domestic uh, violence, uh, yes. abusive relationship yeah. with the government, you know, and we're the ones that keep getting beaten up. That's an unfortunate yeah. analogy, yeah. but very apt. It is. Yeah. It is. I'm afraid. Let's move on to something slightly less. Political, shall Can we? Can I lighten the mood? Crossroads. Yes. Crossroads. Yes. Crossroads. Crossroads. Yeah. Crossroads. <laughs> Crossroads. <laughs> so there's... Uh, I, I can kind of remember Crossroads. I remember in, Benny from Crossroads. Benny. With the hat. With the funny hat. Yeah. Yeah. The, the I used to watch it. I spent... I mean, this is going back a very long way. Um, but when we had the three-day week, yeah. um, um, because there was all these power cuts all over the place, I didn't have, have to go to school one morning a week. Yeah. And so I spent most of the rest of the days watching afternoon you television. Both, Mike. You so it was both. like Crown Court, Crossroads. Yeah. yeah. Um, Rumpole of the Bailey. A Rumpole of the Bailey. Yeah. I think a bit of um, Tales of Magnum PI. I mean, it was great. <laughs> um, but Tales of yeah, the Bailey. There was only blimmin' power cuts. Everyone was watching their television at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, also, by the way, under a Labour government, of course. Yeah. Saying, well, Crossroads is now, it's kind of like the, the pulp fiction of the soaps. It's been right. slapped right. with a trigger warning. Yes. No. Um, ITVX. They made something like 4,500. And, and this is the original one, because they revamped the it, didn't they? Yeah, that's while. right. So yeah. this is the original right. that we would have watched kind of late 70s, all been loaded onto ICVX. But they reckon the characters, the attitudes, the general kind of broadcast standards, right. uh, you know, are, are very much of their time. Mm. So there's a warning now. So right. it's like, you know, it joins a long list of shows like Terry and June, for but example. But what kinds of things have yeah. they got on there that are offensive? Then? Yeah. Well, they reckon themes, characters... Right. Quotes, so the whole some thing. language. The whole <laughs> thing. Yeah. It's all offensive. Yeah, I think we've got, got to watch it now. Yeah, I can't it's wait. Brilliant. Well, I think we've got a clip. This is this is Noel Gordon leaving the show. It says here. Let's have a look. Time to go, darling. Oh, I know Goodbye. Music. I remember. Look at that eyeshadow. Wow. Oscar winning. I didn't, I didn't know. Uh, I, did, I didn't know Silla Black was in it. Was it Meg Richardson? Yeah. Well, <laughs> brilliant, brilliant show. Yeah. That was one of the things that you always noticed about those shows was that the sets were always shaking, weren't yeah. they? Yeah. Because you, you, they just you would close the door and it was kind of going reverberating yeah, no one around, cared, right? Yeah. So what could possibly be offensive, seriously, yeah. about any aspect of that particular? Well, show? when you think about Terry and June, I mean, apart from the theme song which actually does seem very out of date now and far too camp for mm. a kind of early 80s show. I think it's just general attitudes, maybe quotes, you know, really? and characters, stereotypical characters, that's right. what they're so, saying. Uh, ITVX. Yeah. I mean, this... misogyny. Yeah, yeah I mean, the whole the whole thing to boot, I, I suppose. Homophobia. Yeah. I've got to watch it now. On, um, I was in a hotel on Sunday night. You know when you go to a hotel and you just have, like, the crap television, so you sort of flick through the channels and you just find something, anything to land yeah. upon? So you end up watching something that you wouldn't normally I normally It normally takes me so long to work out how the TV works, I just go to sleep. So um, yeah. you know. I, I go through the channels <laughs> and uh, my other half said, oh, let's watch this, let's watch this, and it was Alf Garnet. Right. It was on. Oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. God, it has yeah, a nice well. So I was like, I've not seen well. this before. Yeah. Um, so I was like, OK. I was like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't be allowed to make this today. Yeah. I mean, it was no. like, wow. It was Elf great. Was probably really at that <laughs> wow. edge. I mean, it was cutting-edge comedy as well at the time. <laughs> You know, yeah, Charlie Spade, the writer, yeah. was a brilliant writer. He had, um, so in this one episode, he was famed for having various uh, young men who'd come to stay yeah. with him, young non-British-born yeah. men, and just all the dialogue around yeah. us. Just like wow. rising down, rising yeah. down was the same. exactly right. Yeah. It was amazing, absolutely incredible. Um, well, I mean, we're going to get to the last section of the show now because coming up, uh, my final nomination. It's our favourite newspaper. You might be pleased to know. Um, I'm not going to tell you exactly what it is, but you'll get the idea. Uh, it's uh, it's not shaped like any other, uh, and it's made from the lefties' uh, point of view. Uh, we'll be coming back uh, with the plank of the week, and who's going to win it right after this?
Welcome back to Plank of the Week. We are in the final furlong. I'm going to choose who's going to win it coming up shortly. But first, my final nomination, and it is, of course, everyone's favourite newspaper, The Guardian. Uh, or the Grauniad, you know, which has had plenty of rubbish in it this week, as it always does. Uh, but one particular article stood out, and it was by a bloke who's got one of the greatest comedy names I've ever seen, Robert Reich, um, <laughs> who became known as Third Reich after, uh, after he <laughs> decided... That was a massive stretch, you know, was it? After he decided to call for uh, the sort of destruction of Elon Musk, right? He wrote this piece uh, in which he said this. Uh, he said, Elon Musk is out of control. Here is how to rein him in. He may be the richest man in the world, but that doesn't mean we're powerless to stop him. So, I mean, he pretty much called for everything, including the arrest of Elon Musk, right? Um, he said that uh, he publicly... These, these are amongst his, um, you know, criminal acts. He publicly endorsed Donald Trump last night um, as if um, that was something that was illegal. Yeah. Um, before that, Musk helped form a pro-Trump super political action committee. Meanwhile, the former US president has revived his presence on the X platform. <gasps> so it's a you typical know. left approach, which is I want to ban yes. anything that I don't agree with. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and he basically had a go at him for everything. And in company uh, with Mr Reich uh, was, of course, the wonderfully named Carol Cadwallader, mm. uh, who oh, said this. Sorry. Inciting rioters in Britain was a test run for Elon Musk. Just see what he plans for America. She needs to be a bit careful, that doesn't she? Woman well, she's always paying out is, money to people that, that she slags off. That about, woman is know. mental, right? That yeah. woman spent months and months and months and months pursuing me, telling me I worked for Cambridge Analytica. And I was like, Carol... I was there and I didn't work for Cambridge. No, you did. I'm like, yeah. you can't tell someone that they had a job that they never had. I know. Like, Unbelievable. You, she's mad. Right. She's well, here, mad. Are the, here are the messages that Mr Reich wants you to get, right? So, number one, here's six ways that you've got to destroy Elon Musk. One, boycott Tesla. I mean, if that's not a Guardian <laughs> instruction, <laughs> I don't know what it is. Middle class dictator. You know, can you imagine going up and, <laughs> up and down the working class streets of Rotherham saying... Yeah. Don't you go buying a Tesla now, yeah, 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 you know, yeah. because the man who makes them is a bad man. Yeah, no coconut lattes or rum. Oh, yeah. Come on, mate. Yeah. That's the next and also one. banning private jets. Yeah, advertisers should boycott X, which a lot of them did, and yeah. then Elon Musk decided to sue them. Um, regulators around the world should threaten Musk with arrest if he doesn't stop disseminating lies and hate oh. on Hang X. On. Right? Yeah, don't, don't throw stones when you're in a greenhouse. Yeah. Okay. The yeah. Federal Trade Commission should demand that Musk take down lies that are likely to endanger individuals. And if he does not, he should be sued uh, by the United States Federal Commission. The US government uh, also has powers over Musk if we're willing to use them. The US should terminate its contracts with him, starting with SpaceX. So, I mean, this guy is literally absolutely... Wow. Gone but back. Also because Elon Musk has an opinion that differs to his. Yes, his and also he's quite a powerful, right quite a powerful man, quite a clever man, and he's not going to listen to any garbage from these characters yeah. because one of the things that apparently upset Mr. Reich uh, was that when the European Union had a go at Elon Musk and they said to him, uh, in the form of the uh, European Union Commissioner Thierry Breton, uh, he sent Musk an open letter, uh, making him reminding him that there were EU laws preventing him from disseminating harmful content. Do you know what Elon Musk said to him? Go on. Take a big step back and literally <laughs> your own face. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. I love that. So, so he's 20 brilliant. million or yeah. so Twitter oh, followers. Right. I love that. Oh, I think he's about, <laughs> it's about 100 million. I love the fact, so in Brazil... <laughs> Genius. <laughs> In Brilliant. Brazil, you've got this mad Supreme Court. Oh, yeah, in Brazil. Who also yeah, yeah. Elon Musk yeah. and sort of push to have the platform blocked in Brazil. Now it's gone all leftist and mad over there. And they've had to try and get people to comply to blocking the platform. So they've had to go to Starlink and said, oh, by the way, oh, your satellites so nice. are enabling the platform to be beamed down to Brazil. This is what I love about all the leftists who hate Elon Musk. When they turn around and go like, mm. well, we've got to ban electric vehicles. Oh, we've got to... Get rid of all the satellites in the sky. You know, they just can't <laughs> yeah. do it. No. Like, you know, Elon yeah. literally right actually, now could be like, buy you know, European yeah. Parliament. It's not 1066. So you can't just ban things like that. I know that, we you know. won't have one on the premises for obvious reasons, but if you had a copy of The Guardian in your hands now, I bet yeah. you'd be doing that again. I would be, yeah. Yeah, I haven't ripped one up for a while. That's time you did. Yeah, yeah, this on, guy, I, yeah, I might have to, yeah. Yeah, I'll rip it up digitally, shall I? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll just throw an iPad. Yeah. The guards are becoming more and more like Beano or something. No, but it's you know what's amazing. really funny? I They've been doing it. some it's really funny a stuff. A friend now. of mine um, who does a TV con sends me little snippets out of it every every so often. And they've got this ludicrous um, sort of feature that they do of two people who disagree politically. And here's a great idea, guys. Let's have, have them have lunch together and see if they can get along. Yeah. That's their idea of normality, oh, yeah. right? Yeah. And it's like, you know... Theresa was a Brexiteer. She was amazed to find out that she could actually talk to Johnny, 
uh, who was a Remainer. Mm. And you're kind of going, yeah, well, that's what normal what? people do, <laughs> actually. Yeah. Yeah. We don't always agree with each other. You yeah. know, sometimes you go out for dinner with but people we don't that... hate each other yeah. based on somebody else's ideology. But for them, this is revelatory. You know, absolutely unbelievable. Love it. Anyway, um, so that's the final uh, analysis. I've, I've got to say, I mean, I'm, I'm just going to add up how many Labour people we had in this, <laughs> this time. we got one, uh, two, three, four... Five, yeah, so five Labour MPs this week, uh, slightly less than last week. But um, I wonder whether it just has to be Keir Starmer for the portrait of Maggie. Not for the last time. Not for the last time. And probably something which is, you might actually, at this rate, the way they're going, he's going to knock Harry and Meghan off the perch for Plank of the Year. You know, oh, so we can bring the we can bring the portrait back for the end. So there we are, Keir well Starmer, Prime Minister. By the way, just a reminder: you are now the Prime Minister. Rishi Sunak isn't the Prime Minister anymore, <laughs> so you can stop calling him that, Prime Minister. Uh, that was Plank of the Week. Thanks to Alex. Thanks to Russell. Thanks to Will. Thanks to Steve Denyer. Uh, we'll see you back here same time next week.